Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Series. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and today we're going to discuss Tyler Smith, the first round draft pick for the Dallas Cowboys out of the 2022 NFL Draft out of Tulsa, hometown Fort Worth, Texas, and a guy that's family hopefully will not have to travel too far to go and root for him as he plays at an all-pro level. Guy's getting really good reviews coming out of OTAs, and again, we've discussed how this is probably not the pick that most of us would have picked. I did it. You didn't. You got guys like Zion Johnson, Kenyon Green coming off the board very early and a little bit more surprising than what most mock drafts had him at. So as the lineman kind of fell off, you were kind of entitled to have to, at the back of the first round, to really start to pick guys that would have been second, third round picks to get your guys. But when you listen to what these guys were doing through the draft and seeing how they were picking people, they had their guys and they were going for it. So we get excited about Tyler Smith as he goes through OTAs and you're hearing word from guys like Micah Parsons that's had to go against him, or even Dak Prescott comparing him to Ron Leary, a guy that was a very pushy uh, offensive guard and really a guy that once he left, that position was never really the same. So can you put a guy like Tyler Smith in there and hopefully he can kind of do his thing? Yes, the number 73 on his chest reminds you of a Larry Allen. So it all pointing to a great, you know, prophecy in the sense of what this left guard can do. But the fact that this team, or in the sense of the Jason Garrett era, the Mike McCarthy era, and their whole flexing in different positions. So how much flexing do we really want this guy to do? When the offensive line was flexing last year, the only guy that was solid in there without the flexing was Zach Martin because he played in an all-pro level. Now, was it because it's Zach Martin or was it because it's at that right guard position and he just stayed there and he refused to leave and you didn't move him because he was your top guy? So he knew what he needed to do. He needed to stay at that one position and dominate that position. And that's what Tyler Smith needs to do for the left guard position. He doesn't need to switch over to the left tackle. Left tackle, you're shifting your feet, you're shuffling one way, and this team is all about hey, right tackle that shifts this way at a against a defensive end that can get to a quarterback in three to four seconds with a swim move, spin move, uh, knock your hands down type of move, punch in the face, punch in the gut, gets to your quarterback real fast. But so switching that guy to the other side and making him shift another way, somehow this coaching staff doesn't believe there's any difference. It's just like switching cleats on your on your shoes. You can just unscrew it and put it back in, and you should be able to play just as well so this coaching staff is very frustrating when it comes to their whole flexing concept but hey you want your backups to be able to flex and i concept that whole thing because you don't know who's going to go down except for tyron smith and that's the position that you're seeing tyron smith go into because you know you don't know what's going to go in that left tackle position you don't know what a guy like matt lesko or josh ball is capable of until you plug him in there and you can leave a guy like tyler smith alone so What's the benefits for Tyler Smith? He's a guy that's pushy. Now, I don't mean a bad type of pushy, you know, your significant other where they're like, Do I look fat in this dress? It's just not the same in that sense. It's a good pushy, a guy that's gonna benefit this team and you're gonna watch this football having fun. So will he be able to kind of dominate that position that was undominated by Connor Williams? So Connor Williams, of course, was always in the holding penalties but holding for his dear life, while Tyler Smith in college was more holding because he was big. He was he was just too big for the competition, didn't know where to put his hands. So coming out of OTAs, you're hearing, he's putting his hands all inside. He's putting them in the right spots. He's taking on guys and honestly manhandling them or stonewalling them. Uh, you hear one rep that he went against, Michael Parsons was able to stop him. Congratulations. I'm not basing your whole you know career off of that but it's really good that you didn't get beat so that's a positive now just like bill parcells would say you know put the anointing oil away because we don't know what this guy's capable of yet so on that very positive note we're going to switch some segment here and we're going to talk to a fellow youtuber and we go and do our stuff on on sundays with mark we did the draft together a very knowledgeable guy that i love talking to about football my boy brian the soup nazi no soup for you Prime time, Phil. What's going on? It's going pretty good, Brian, man. Uh, first question we have to ask, because I think you are with us and a lot of Cowboys, is what did you first initially think? Did you even know a lot of stuff about Tyler Smith? I didn't know much about Tyler Smith going into the draft. Um, what I do know, he's big man strong. He's very, very strong. 
Yeah, I would definitely agree with you on that one. Strength is definitely something that screams off the page when you watch his film. So I, I definitely will agree with you on that one. So give me an example of something that he's done that maybe other guys don't normally do. And give me some of his strengths. He only played two years of college. He actually played in 13 games, 11 starts. I would say his strengths are he's big, he's wide, and he's nasty. Sounds like someone I dated. Violent and powerful. Yeah, it definitely sounds like somebody I dated. So when do you say these traits come out the most? Especially at the point of attack. When he gets his hands on you, it's a wrap. Um, where he struggles is in space. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you on that one. And it's funny because we're agreeing, but this is what I've kind of been throwing in the segment was the fact that I don't really think that he's out there in left tackle would be a good thing, especially in his rookie year in the NFL when you're going against these big, huge guys. So what would you say during the whole time that he's doing his mistakes? How does he get caught up in those things? What, where's, where does he go wrong? You know, what tends to happen you know, from what I see what happened you know, with him is he gets his center of balance off. He doesn't keep his feet under him and he ends up reaching. He's got great feet. All he needs is a coach to teach him some technique. Well, hopefully he can find those coaches in Dallas because I'm not really sure about filming, but you know, we've had this discussion about him as well too. So when you add those little things up, you know, these little things that he has to add, what would you say one good feature about him? One thing that just stands apart from other people? I would say his grip, once he gets his hands on you, like I said, it's a wrap. So in the locker room this year, Tyler Smith's gonna be the one that's gonna be opening up the peanut butter jars for everybody because he got that grip. I like it, I like it. So uh, Brian, to throw out and kind of close out this segment, uh, what would you say is the very important thing going into Tyler Smith's rookie year? Like, give me one important thing. Um, I think the important thing is, is if Tyron Smith stays healthy all year, I know that's a big if, but if it happens, that is going to do wonders for Tyler Smith. Um, if he can play next to the Tyron Smith, play left guard, stay away from the tackle spot for now, awesome. And just think ahead a year in the NFL program and the strength and conditioning, um, he's going to be a beast down the line. Well, very well said, Brian, honestly. And, and it kind of gets you excited about what Tyler Smith can bring to the table. So uh, let's go ahead and close this segment on now with a positive note. Let's give him a chance. I think he's going to be dominant, and uh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. Go Cowboys. No soup for you. So that was my boy, Brian, the soup Nazi underscore 89. If you want to follow him on Twitter, a very good football mind to bring and broaden, honestly, the horizons of what this show can be. I, I don't always agree with every YouTuber out there that's a Dallas Cowboys thing, and I think that's definitely an okay thing. We are Cowboy Nation. This is the reason why it's America's team. We're big. So, of course, we're going to have people with different views, but we still together should come and root for our team. So, I like to see other people's opinions on our draft picks like Tyler Smith. So, in the next episode, we're going to go for D. Williams, Sam Williams, whatever you want to call him. Our second round draft pick out of Ole Miss. So, Definitely stay tuned for that one on the next episode, not stay tuned on this one. But I appreciate all your support. Hit that subscribe button if you can. Like always, I'm Primetime Phil, but don't forget to always ring that bell.